Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in again for part three of my conversation with Jeffrey Shaw. Already, we've been talking before I just pushed record, and I'm starting to think we might need to do a part four. We'll see how today goes. We've got so much good stuff to talk about. Jeffrey Shaw has put together this great free e-guide. We'll put a link below the video. Jeff, give me a real quick high level. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to read this. So it's in this free guide, you include six simple shifts that will change how you see your business and how your market responds to you. What do you mean by that? Just give me an idea of what, what, what people can expect when they get this free guide. Okay. Well, it's, um, and, and thank you, Nate, for having me again. It, uh, you know, it's a chain, it is truly a change of perspective. And I'll give you a little uh, insight. It actually had a, a different name, which I think gives a little background as to what people expect. It was originally called uh, having an attitude of shifting from an attitude of entitlement yeah. to an attitude of enrollment. Wow. And I, I changed it because I felt I was just a little uncomfortable t telling people they had an attitude of entitlement <laughs> and, not, and not being there in person to explain what I really meant because I didn't want to insult anybody. Right. At the end of the day, if you, if you look at these, these perspective changes, uh, starting the original thought Kind of is an attitude of entitlement, you know. Like the, one of the, the first uh, perspective shift I offer is uh, the attitude and build it. They will and they will come. You know, build it and they will come. Mm -hmm. And what I suggest is thinking instead along the lines of invite them and they will come. Yeah. You know, because the attitude of build it and they will come at, at its heart is an attitude of entitlement. Yeah. You know, that you can simply open your doors, yeah. and people are just going to knock down your doors to to get in. Right. And it just. You know, it worked great in the movie Field of Dreams, but it's just not reality. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to me, this this topic in particular represents the whole, truly the the entire marketing shift in business. Yep. From you know, and you know this from uh, marketing to people to marketing you know to inviting people towards you. Yep. Uh, so the the idea of the guide is to to pick apart what are pretty fundamental beliefs that people have in business yep. and offer a complete opposite and different perspective, which is far more aligned with the way business works today. Totally. Yeah. I see that time and time again. I was had this great conversation with, uh, her name is Heather Donnellan. She was on uh, Photographers at Night. Uh, she's based out of Naples and we were both geeking out about a Shark Tank. Yeah, and I, I love it. I just It's such a great show, and I think it does such a good job of educating uh, our, like, just business owners and other entrepreneurs or wannabe, I call them uh, entrepreneurs, about what it really means to have a business. And time and time again, the biggest mistake people make is they overvalue the idea of their business, just of a product. Well, all I have to do is make it and put it on a shelf or open my door. Yeah. And that is, that's like, that's the starting line. People yeah. think, oh my God, I work so hard to build this thing. And it's like, I, I, I meet new entrepreneurs every day. And like, nope, you're at the starting line. It's going to get really hard now. Now there's, there's like a, a safari, a desert between you, even though you, you have something amazing to offer, there is this desert and mountains and walls between you and your perfect customer. Now the hard part is going to find them and inviting them so that they trust you, so that they know how to find you and they want to do business with you. Like it's, that is a lot of hard work and it just doesn't, you don't just get to say, I'm going to be a photographer and people come and hire yeah. you. Absolutely. And like I said, I think it's a real shift from marketing to people to inviting them towards you. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a whole language change to <laughs> learn to walk people towards your business yep. and and do it in a way that you kind of you start with meeting with where they already are you know yeah. um, you don't you cannot come on too strong nowadays and you know people just back away from that so it's it's really like the typical wedding photographer I'll tell them you know you gotta you have to enroll that bride and groom in a pretty slow way I mean mm -hmm. Offer them some information. Offer them maybe a free download on your website so they can get to know what makes you tick a little bit. Yeah. Encourage them then to inquire. And then when they inquire, don't assume that they don't take on an attitude. Like when they come in, they're automatically a client. You then have to you know, really build that trust and relationship. We can just we can get so anxious to get to where we want to go too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is, it's a whole, uh, like I said, it's a complete shift 
from just you know build it and they will come to invite them and they will come and inviting them in a, in a slow way. Totally. So say more on there. Let's, let's spend a little bit more time on that concept and give me a, a, a t- tactical example that somebody new to this can can start implementing in their business. How can they, do, as a photographer, start doing a better job of inviting uh, yep. their customers? Well, you know, I think s- supporting... Uh, so I gave the example of the wedding photographer. I think um, I actually, and I, I worked with a, I coached a, a photographer who specialized in senior portraits. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I recommended for her to do was to produce a download about, you know, put together the information and create a, a document that people could could download that was about how to throw the perfect senior portrait party. You know, so it's content. It's offering content that's valuable to people so that you can begin the process of establishing uh, a, a relationship. Uh, one of the places I learned this lesson the best was actually from a friend of mine who's a massage therapist. Yeah. I, I asked him once, like, what do you do with the client that comes in really wired, really uptight, probably the way I come in, <laughs> you know, and how do you get them to slow down? And, you know, he said, well, first he meets them where they already are, you know, because if you try to slow the body down quicker than it's ready, the muscles are just going to tense, you know. So it was kind of a deep lesson and understanding that of meeting people where they are mm-hmm. and taking them to where you think they'll be served best, but in a slow way. Mm-hmm. And I think that has pretty profound principles for us as business people. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's a, a business out there, Photo Shelter, uh, yeah. which, you know, uh, for storage, online galleries, I'm not yep. sure exactly what they do, but they have built an amazing business pretty much on free content. They have. I, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan. They do. Ama- yeah. They've got they, amazing content. They do. They have amazing content. That's how I found out about them. They just had constant uh, documents available that you could download that were amazingly good content. And it wasn't even a really about their core product. Yep. But it built a relationship for me to understand. It's like, wow, this is a cool con- I actually called and spoke to the CEO. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. You offer this. What is this doing for you? Yeah. And he said, this is like the only way we're building our business. So uh, I think there are a lot of tactical ways a photographer can specifically, um, like I said, creating, creating useful information for your clients that can help and start building a trusting relationship with them. Right. And then, like I said, you know, inviting people in for consultations or whoever you meet with your clients mm-hmm. and, you know, starting with the no in a way, which is kind of an old sales thing. Like, don't assume that person's a fit for you yet, uh, right. not only for your own benefit, fit, but for theirs. Yeah. And then, you know, get to know each other and, and then walk towards uh, what's the best fit for them and your services. Yeah. So there's a couple things I want to pull apart. So the first, uh, going back to, like, an analogy of this, uh, the desert, another one I use is just, like, getting new customers is similar to ha- having them cross the bridge and the old model is just yelling really loud from your side of the bridge about yourself and hoping that some people will cross and check you out the new model is cross you going over to their side of the bridge and building a relationship and, and getting to know them and uh, wanting to know more about their world and, and offering them something that they instantly care about instead of talking about you the yeah. whole time. I'll even add another perspective to that. I think it's also about being recognized. You know, I think it's important, particularly as photographers, to have, um, you know, I'll use brand identity, but yeah. your brand identity is yourself. Yeah. Being so clear in what your values are and who you are as a business that you are recognized by the people who are a good fit for you. Yes. You know, yeah. there's this whole notion, and I'm just as guilty of anybody who's using the terminology finding your tribe and mm-hmm. seeking out your tribe. and. I'm trying to reframe that a little bit um, because more and more I'm finding it's less about you finding your tribe as much as it is being recognized by your tribe. Right. You know, do the people that you want to work with get you? Mm -hmm. Do they, can they see who you are and what you're all about from a distance, which nowadays is our websites? Like, do they really get your values and what you stand for from things that are as ethereal and abstract as your website? Mm -hmm. You know? So it's about them recognizing you from the other side of the bridge yeah. so you can maybe meet in, in the middle, like yep. yeah, yep. that's an analogy. Yeah, I think that uh, another, the other point I wanted to talk about that is how what's what's changing is the reason why old old style marketing isn't working, just buying print ads or um, signage or stuff like that. It's that, that, that old style is like in your face, interruption, Here's a discount. Here's a re- like, hey, here's all about me. Come buy this thing now. Yeah. That stuff, it's, it's still all around, 
but it's so all around that we're becoming numb to it. And while you might get some response to that early, it's not setting you up to A, have the right kind of customers, and B, it's not gonna set you up to build a long-term business. And I think it's, I think it's important that you and I lay that foundation, and that's what we're talking about here. There's a lot of people that come into photography for a number of reasons, that whether business is a strength or something you're working on building, um, it's important to start thinking about how can you make your business something that supports you, not just this year as a hobby or as part-time employment, but how do you build this into a snowball that starts to really, so that you can, you can actually step away from your business and it's okay, so that you can actually go on a vacation and things don't fall apart, or you're, you're still making some money, or you don't have to worry about working on it the entire time. Yeah. So the old, the old model of print just is not working anymore. Um, it, it, it can be hard for somebody who's starting out or who, who's trying to take their business to the next level to let go of the security blanket that is those short-term returns, right? Yeah. I, it's, it's very safe as a business person starting out to say, I'm gonna invest this much time and energy, but I wanna see a return on it tomorrow or this week. Where that, it, it's fun to do that if it's working, um, it costs a lot and it's usually not sustainable because it locks you into this cycle of in order to get new business the next week, you've got to keep doing that. And it just keeps going over and over. Where when you step back and start this new model of building your, your email database, of building your client relationships, building relationships in your, in your area, all of this stuff takes months if not years to grow, mm -hmm. but once you're there, that's when, that's when customers just start walking in your door. Well, two things on that. One is the reason a lot of that, the old way of marketing isn't work, working is people aren't seeing it. Yeah. You know, and they're just simply not seeing it. Yeah. I mean, we're not watching ads on TV anymore. We're skipping through them. We're TiVoing them. We're not, you know, people are watching, reading magazines on their Kindles. I mean, this stuff just simply isn't getting through. It's such yeah. an old medium. It's just yeah. simply not getting through. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not being seen. Secondly, and I think it's a bigger issue, and it's actually one of the other perspective changes that I, that I speak to in the e-guide, um, that safety and comfort are important to me. That's, that's you know, something people say. Safety and comfort is important to me. And my response to that is growth, growth lies at the edge of fear. You know, and and I think of the reason a lot of people it's it's there's no fear in placing an ad. You know, it's yeah. very distant. Mm -hmm. You know, you take out an ad. Um, the challenge is stepping into what is a little fearful. Yep. You know, and what's fearful for most photographers are sales, networking, mm -hmm. putting themselves out there and building the relationships. But yet, that's the only place the growth is going to lie. And that's that's. You know, that's why I think too many photographers are hiding behind mm -hmm. uh, online galleries with order fulfillment because totally. it, it, you know, it's fear-based. It's it staying away from the the fear of I don't like making sales. Yep. You know, yep. it's getting past the. It, to me, it's there's even more, and it's a whole different conversation. But there's there's more. It's more than about the fear of sales. It's it's reframing the idea that frame, that sales are all about taking from people, yeah. which is kind of what uh, innately a lot of people just feel like, well, if I, you know, and make the act of making a sale is taking something from people. Mm -hmm. And it's not if you're doing it from a place of expertise and service. Service, yeah, exactly. You know? uh, that's that's so, powerful stuff, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's hard to get people even there, but once you can get them to understand it's a place of service, yeah, it's a little, it can be scary, mm -hmm. but that's where you grow, that's where the real growth Lies and a it lot is. of the old marketing was just, you know, alienated. Uh, you know, only put an ad in, in a magazine and and hope for the best. And it just simply. Yeah, I hear. I hear. Work. I hear every day. I hear stories of people saying, "Well, I, I put this ad in a newspaper. It ran one day and it cost a couple hundred bucks. Like yeah. it didn't do anything." Yeah. But they keep. Then they'll go try a different a different place. And then they'll go try a different place. And it's hard to say this, but it's that that's just playing it safe because there's a part of you that likes being able to just blame that placement, yeah. right? Because it's then it's not your fault you didn't get new business. Yeah. Whereas if it's you going out and asking a, a, the florist in your area to out for coffee yeah. or out for lunch, to 
where it's not even about this like how do you get how do I get your customers this week? It's yeah. how do I support you in your business? Yeah. And if somebody says no to that, I get that that's going to sting, right? So it, yeah. it is risky, but the the potential upside is exponential. Yeah. And that's where you really start to to see real growth in your business is when you have relationships with people with your clients and with other vendors in the area that are constantly thinking and working on your behalf. And, and let me, you know, offer uh, your viewers some a thought on that is to to really help them out. I mean, you're going to set out, you're talk, going to talk to people, or you're at a party. Before you set out, get really clear mm -hmm. on who your perfect client is. Yeah. You know, not even what you do, but exactly who you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, you know, it used to be called elevator phrase, cocktail phrase, whatever you want yeah. to call it. Um, and it actually, but to me, takes on a very different form. It's not about telling people what you do, but being very clear who you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give you my, my real life example. If I'm out and somebody asks me, oh, what do you do? Yeah. To me, what I'm hearing is they want to know who do I serve. Yeah. Okay, because I'm not interested in telling them what I do. I'm interested in telling them who I serve yeah. so that they can figure out are they my client or do they know someone exactly. with the client? Exactly. That's that's effective referrals. It is. So if they ask me, you know, well, what do you what do you do? I say, well, my clients commission me to photograph their families and children on location at their homes, their beach homes or their vacation homes. Yep. That's it. It's a one sentence, what's it take all of four or five seconds to, to relay. But I'll bet you have an exact idea as to who my clientele is. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And they can immediately identify, you know, and there's a few things in there. First of all, I say, my clients commission me. Yeah. So I'm I'm immediately putting in real life form that it's that's from the perspective of my clients. Mm -hmm. And I identify, I photograph families and children on location. Yep. I carefully implant the idea that at their home, their vacation home, and their beach houses. <laughs> so I'm qualifying, you know, my clientele as yeah. to the people I have multiple. Inst instantly, homes. that person you're talking to is going like thinking through the short list of people who they know who have beach exactly. houses, and they're exactly. like, oh, I would have, like, and like they want. Th there's this. Uh, Seth Godin talks about the connection economy, right? Yeah. And that's what people really value that. They value, even if that person you're talking to isn't going to be your customer, we really get a kick out of connecting to people, right? Absolutely. Everybody does. Everybody gets a kick out of that. And yeah. so you can enable a person to make that connection for you by just succinctly saying what, you're, what you offer and how you serve. That's tremendous. Yeah. So I think, you know, it, it, in order to step into this, this, the new way of marketing, getting away from the fear and the hiding behind the ads, if you're going to head out, it's really important to head out with a very clear statement yeah. as to exactly who your client is. Yeah. Uh, you can so quickly, you know, walk into that florist, as you had mentioned, or some other place that you want to connect with and really cl quickly identify. Yeah. Uh, the same is true when you ask for referrals. Even if you're asking from your own clients for referrals, you, you, you can't expect people to work too hard. Right. You know, uh, gee, do you know anybody? Do, do I, would any of your friends be interested in my services? It's just too broad. You know, you have to identify exactly yeah. who your perfect client is. One of my uh, one of my coaching clients photographs newborns, and I've got her so good at this now. She knows to ask. She'll say, "I'm lo I'm looking for women in their last trimester or who gave birth in the last three weeks." Yeah. <laughs> it's so clear. You yeah. you either know somebody in that realm or, or you don't. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, that's and, so great. Right. When that's I think that's a best practice, even outside of of getting new clients, but it's especially important when you, in this realm. But when you're sending an email or any type of communication, uh, deliver it in a way so that you don't, you're, you're, the, the receiver doesn't have to do a bunch of work, right? Yeah. You give them everything they need in the, in the email to take action, to, to review something. It's like, hey, do you wanna go to a movie next week? It's like, what? <laughs> what how does that, like, here's the difference between, hey, here's a movie, that so and so, like a mutual friend, t told us is really good. It's uh, it's showing at this time at this theater. How would you like to go? Exactly. Like, let let give them, give your audience, your receivers, the information they need to yeah. make a decision and take action. Yeah, yeah, and it, it does relate back to what we're saying about fear. You know, it's 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 just not. Uh, it's, it's there's a lot of fear in 
hiding behind, you know, just trying to get the conversation over with real quick. Yeah, right. Instead of staying with it, staying present. And, you know, and, and the truth of the matter is that when you tip the scale and you get a better response, when you start having these conversations and getting a better response, it then, you know, encourages you to continue doing that. And before you know it, it's not at all scary to make sales. Yeah, it's not at right. all scary to go out and, and meet people and, and generate your business and make your connections. And, yep. you know, uh, I had somebody recently asked me, uh, you know, everything's in place in her business. She goes, you know, what's what's the piece I'm missing? What's the piece that I'm not getting? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the piece. The yeah. piece is simply making sure you're out in your community and, and introducing people, you know, yourself to people, your services, and being very clear on who you serve, particularly if you can work with businesses that, have a, that are serving a similar clientele. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I like using the analogy of Maslow's hierarchy a lot. We'll see if this fits. So I think that um, when you're first starting your business, the first thing, the first, I think, threshold to cross is to start thinking about this as a business and not a hobby. So getting really honest with yourself with how valuable is my time? Yes, I might be selling. This might sound like a lot of money to you. Well, if it sounds like a lot of money to, to you, Trust me, it's, you're projecting that onto your clients Absolutely. because you haven't gotten around the conversation of, of th what you're delivering is not just the product, it's all of your time that, right. that, re that is required of you to deliver the final service. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the first thing, right? And then after that, it's going, okay, so now, now I'm comfortable thinking about this as a business. I need to make sure I'm devoting a set amount of time to growing my business and not just doing not just the everyday doing because there's always a thousand cool new things to do new camera gear to learn and to go buy and shop for to spend time on Facebook and it's like no you need to invest a set amount of time on your business marketing and then finally the very pinnacle of this like altruistic the top of Maslow's hierarchy is focusing time not on the short term marketing return but the long term like how am I building my business for next year for five years how am I continuing to put into place marketing efforts that are gonna build my business for the long term and not just for next week because I'm nervous about booking sessions yeah and it's um, one of the other perspective shifts in the e-guide is uh, the old thought would be I'm really good at what I do yeah yeah the new thought is I want to do more of what I'm good at. Okay, that you know if you're in innate, innately photographers, yeah, you have skills. You know, yeah. you've, you come into this, you've got talents. It's it's eventually getting to the point of being committed to wanting to actually provide your services and gifts. And the only way you can do that is through a sustainable business model. Mm -hmm. And it's simple. You know, there's there, there, it's way too easy to be super talented at something and not be able to create a sustainable business that allows you to actually give what you've got to the people who want to receive it. Right, right. You know, so, uh, photographers, we need to get more, even more business minded. This mm -hmm. is a, and I'll tell you, I, I, that's, I call it the dirty little secret in the industry sometimes that every highly successful photographer that I've ever met is almost more business minded than art minded. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I call it the dirty little secret because there's a little bit of a shame in admitting that mm -hmm. because, you know, we want to be known for our art and for right, our art. Right, right. The fact of the matter is every successful photographer I have ever met, and there have been many, many, many of them, are myself included. I, I came into I'm more business minded mm -hmm. than I am photography minded. Yep. You know, and I don't mean that to discredit the integrity behind my work at, at any way. The fact yeah. of the matter is, I want to stay in business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to continue to do what I do. And I'll even go as far as to say that, you know, at its core, photography provides for me an opportunity to meet the people I want to meet. Yeah. You know, the photography itself is almost secondary. Yeah. You know, but it's the process and the relationship that I build with uh, clients is actually what's more rewarding to me. It is. And uh, even the execution of the, of the photographs. Right. It I is. It's, it's, a very, it's a very delicate thing. I think that whenever we talk about any business that's so tied closely to art and to right. uh, the creative side of the things we do, uh, it gets people get really sensitive about it. But the reality is we've all seen uh, work out there mm -hmm. that like from a creative, from an artistic standpoint, isn't that strong, 
but the clients are so happy to receive it. I think we, one thing we can all relate to is you've got this image that you think is amazing. And then you've got an image from the same shoot that you're like, ah, oh, I just, that's, that, I don't know, even know if I should include it, but I didn't get from this angle, so I'll include it. And then that's the, that's one, the one they chose. They, they freaking <laughs> yeah. blow up over the mantle, right? Like, yeah. It's so subjective. And there's a story or there's a reason on from the client side why they like that, why that image is so important to them. And that's where we've got to get out of our own way. And absolutely continue to build your the portrait side of your business in such a way that it supports you um, in doing like a creative project that's just for you. Just go be artistic, do landscapes or do a documentary photography or something like that where it's pure art, where you're not doing it for anybody but yourself. That's great. But in order to be able to have time to do stuff like that, You've got to treat your business like a business, right? Anyway. Or, you know, as I said, I mean, for me, I think the the context of what art is has changed. I mean, for me, the art of relationship in my business is almost more powerful than the art of the photograph. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, so much of my business is about relationship building and, and uh, forming those relationships with my clients and maintaining those relationships. I've been in business for thirty years. Yep. More than fifty percent of my business a year is repeat. Yes. You know, that's so for me, my greatest accomplishment as an artist has been the art of building relationships over a 30 year span. And that's that's the new world. That's the new economy we're living in is people. It's so busy. It's so noisy that uh, in order to to be in business, you've got to be establishing relationships. Otherwise, otherwise, it's a race to the to to zero. There's like two things that matter. There's no middle ground anymore. It's either I want the cheapest and the easiest. Yeah. Or I want somebody that I really, really trust, and I'm willing to spend for that. I I never want to be competing with like Walmart on yeah. price. Like you know, nobody wants to be that anymore, especially in the service world. That's just that's just no way to to, to live your life, in my opinion. And so then, really quickly, you've got to learn that hanging out in the middle, you're just going to get swallowed up, and 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 people aren't going to even notice you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you know, my you know to, to kind of circle this around, my, yeah. my my intention with the e guide is sort of along these lines. It's like to give people six quick tips. Do you remember the Do you remember the series of books? Eat this, eat eat this, not that. I don't know. Okay, there was a series of books out for a while that yeah. was um, so it was very short, pithy little books that you know if you went to McDonald's, yeah. make this choice, not this choice, and it would actually break down the calorie difference. Nice. You know, it's just really concise. That's yep. sort of what this e guide is like. It's like if you're thinking this, think this instead. Yep. It's that is that's the structure. Um, I, I lay out all six fundamental shifts, and then I explain each of them very briefly. Yep. Like if you're thinking this. Simply try thinking this. That's perfect. Uh, and that's, you know, what, I, what I'm going for is offering six, you know, really quick little business lessons that you can simply change your business by, by just thinking differently. That's awesome. And I, I think that while this, this talk was pretty high level, um, there's one more tactical question I want to I end with. Um, but I think it's so important to get this part right, this foundational per, the, the the power your the way you see your business has that's like the the very start of a river right and if you get this wrong these the way you're viewing your yourself and your art and your business it, it leads you down a completely other path that's much harder to course correct with tactics down the road you've got to get this high level strategy nailed so Absolutely. thank you for offering this awesome book. I'm really excited for you guys to, to go download it and, and please let us know what you think. Um, 